This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. All right, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. And this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, which is created by Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, the co-chair of which, and my, my co-host today, sitting next to me, Sharon Moriwaki. Way Aloha. Applause. Aloha. Yeah. Good to be here, Jay, on a Wednesday, sunny Wednesday. So here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy, we talk about transportation. And we're, uh, this month, we're this talking month. about planning a path to 100% renewable energy transportation. Okay, and today's show we're entitling Smart Planning Leads to Clean Transportation. And our uh, special guest of the day is Gary Andrushak, joins us by VoIP phone uh, from Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, uh, Gary is the director of IBI Group. And he appeared a month ago here in Hawaii on the uh, Salvage the Rail program at the State Capitol Auditorium, which was a very valuable discussion. And you were a great speaker, Gary. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And, and you could tell us a little bit about how, it's, how we can go from being a uh, city that grew like Topsy to one that is much more efficient uh, and beautiful, as you, you have done in Vancouver. And, and you know of other places as well. We want to know how do we plan together for that clean energy future uh, with moving people around more efficiently, goods and services. You can give us a little bit of your expertise. Right. Uh, Sharon, that's a, that's a good segue into what, what I do. Um, I'm, I'm the uh, practice lead for our company for something called transit-oriented de development. Um, I, I, it's, a, it's a practice I pursue across North America. And mm -hmm. I'm going to just take a moment to, to read out a definition of what TOD is. It's a focus on the integration of transportation and land use planning in support of livable communities that are compact, dense, mixed use, walkable, engaging, and resilient. And, and you just mentioned Vancouver, the city I live in and, and the city I practice in. And I think it, it would fit very nicely to the definition that I, I, I just read. If you, hmm. if you go to downtown Vancouver on any evening, it's full of, of, of people knowing about people and, and, and outdoor cafes, people who are, um, who are walking along the promenade uh, along the, the waterfront. But importantly, people who, who are not driving. They're, 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 they're pedestrians in part because, because Vancouver, like all great cities, are, are built on a really good public uh, transportation transit network. And, and, and that's really the key to what the discussion I can bring to, to the topic of, of, of smart planning and, and, and clean energy and the reason why I was at the uh, at the forum in, in Honolulu uh, last month, it's, it, it, to my mind, your city is at a, at, at a fork in the road right now with regard to how it moves forward um, with um, public transit. Uh, to my mind, the best public transit is transit that is that great, uh, accessible, you can step on it, you can step off it. Uh, it enhances rather than detracts from or, or, or puts the wall up. Um, to your city so and I'm not sure that the focus of our conversation right now is is only on the the, the rapid transit proposals for downtown Honolulu I, I, I did in fact attempt to anticipate some some questions or or, or definitions or description of, of what a city should be looking for when it when it is it is moving forcefully into the 21st century. So I would like to focus, would... Uh, Gary, on transportation and, in fact, clean transportation and how that might have developed in Vancouver because you probably didn't start off that way as, as mm -hmm. most cities. And no. how could you get to that point? And, and maybe focus more on that. We can talk about transit in September when you return. Okay. And I was focusing more on transportation, the bigger picture of a clean transportation system, a cleaner well, city. And, 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 and Sharon, I'll attempt that, but of course, uh, when, when, I'm, when I'm speaking or describing what, 
we've done in Vancouver over the course of the last 40 years, um, you can you, 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 you can sort of take what I'm saying and think about it in with regard to where Honolulu is at, at, at present without me actually describing what those circumstances are. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm gonna I'm gonna dial back to the early 1970s when uh, when Vancouver's waterfront was like most waterfronts and industrial the harbor cities it was a working it was a working harbor and, and it was, was was losing its impact somewhat because the, the rail had had fallen away and given way to, to to delivering goods and services by 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 transport trucks so. So the transportation planners in their wisdom at the time decided that they were going to build a freeway into the downtown from the Trans-Canada Highway to the east and certainly from the airport to the south. And of course, transportation planning always finds the path of least resistance. So in this case, that would have been the waterfront lands in front of the, 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 the railway. And, and, and the citizens of Vancouver said, this just isn't right. It, it's not right to... To, to take away our trains and then, then block our access and our views to the waterfront by virtue of putting a freeway in front of it. And, and, and the, the city uh, fathers, to their credit, held a referendum, and, and, and the citizens of Vancouver overwhelmingly voted not to build the freeway. So, so mm -hmm. that, was, that was the first uh, fight, I guess, that, that, that we won as we moved towards mm -hmm. a... a uh, a, a transit-supported livable community. The, the, the second thing that happened, and this was somewhat serendipitous, in the early 1980s, the, the city of Vancouver decided it wanted to host the World, World Fair. And initially, it, it went after not a, a, an, an A category fair, but a B category fair. And, and it was a transportation um, fair. It was called um, um, A World in Motion, A World in Touch. And as part of that, they built a, 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 a demonstration or had envisioned to build a, a one kilometer demo, demonstration of this elevated rail system that has, has emerged over time into our, our, our sky train system. The fair upgraded to a full-fledged world fair and, 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 and really became a window to the world. And, and it was when, when people from all over came to Vancouver and saw the beauty of the city, but saw saw its potential as well. And in fact, when the fair was over, the the the, the waterfronts to the south were, were were sold to a Hong Kong developer named Lee Kan Sheng, who who uh, decided that he would bring the Hong Kong model of, of of dense high-rise apartment buildings. And of course, the best way to serve them would be to expand this. Uh, newly envisioned tra uh, transit network. Now, we have the benefit of tunnels in the downtown, so we could build a system that, that worked out from the center and, and, and out into the suburbs. But that, so that was, that was the start of, of a, a, a really good uh, rapid transit network. And, 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 and the line got expanded once in 2000 and then again for the Olympics. And, and when the Olympics were held in 2010, once again, the world came to Vancouver, and by that time, they saw a, a very different city, a city that has probably 120,000 new residents living downtown, and they don't even need cars because they take transit, so that's the quickest way to get to, mm. to clean energy. Um, they walk to work, and if you, if you go to downtown Vancouver on any, any, any work day, you see thousands of people just streaming to work. Uh, either on foot or more recently on bicycles, um, and so, in one sense, and going back to what I do as a, as a, a TOD planner, the the, the 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 best thing we can do is simply put residential and and, and office and employment in 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 a juxtaposition where you you, you don't even even need to to mm -hmm. to get in a car or, or or even take transit to get to work. So so we worked hard at that over over the last. 40 years, and I can say that the city of Vancouver has, the transportation department has statistics with it, which they're very proud to share with everybody. Vancouver is the only city in North America that since 2000 has seen a 
a reduction, and in this case, it's a 15% reduction in the number of vehicle trips into the downtown core on a daily basis. And and, and in the same time, they, 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 they doubled the, the population of, hmm. of, 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 of residents in the downtown core. So, so, so the correlation is, is there, and, and, and it's really one that I would like to think that Honolulu could aspire to as well. So, so that might be too long an answer, but it is an answer. Honolulu is a very aut automobile-centric um, community. Was Vancouver Pardon? that? Honolulu is a very, well, Hawaii, yeah. very automobile-centric uh, community. Well, it was Vancouver that way, or did you train people <laughs> to get out of their well, cars? <laughs> no, well, well, it's a bit of both, but, but uh, and I will say that in, in, in Canada, despite the fact that, that we're a net uh, exporter of, of energy, we've, we've always priced it higher to our residents. In other words, Driving a car in, in Canada is much more costly than it is in most parts of the well. I, I submit in all parts of the U.S. So, so, so we we, we, we try to uh, uh, to to properly price the fact that, that 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 cars cause problems, and if you if you want to drive, you you've got to you've got to pay for it. But but like Honolulu, we've got you know we're 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 we're, we're constrained by. By water and, 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 and mountains, and in our, our case, a, a, a green belt. So it makes it harder to drive just because there's more and more congestion. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I contend that congestion is good because that's the best way to, to get people out of their cars. Well, we're doing great on that score. This is top us. <laughs> we, we, we get a, a, a 10 points on that one. But what I'm saying is that. Um, in, in cities I work in, as soon as we can prove that public transit, and in this case rapid transit, is faster than going by car, we, 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 we've got a ready market. It, it, it's tough to get people out of their cars, admittedly, and, and experience has shown that it's tough, it's tough to get people out of their cars and onto traditional buses. Uh, the only exception to that is, 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 is the younger millennials coming up, and, and I've got a story I can talk about that in, in a moment. But, but for the most part, commuters will only make the jump from their car to if, if, if they're allowed something at least as good as their car. And, and, and so, to, to my mind, it's, it, it, it's fixed rail or it's what I would call bus rapid transit, which we describe as as light rail transit on, on rubber wheels. The, 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 the exception to that are, it, it seems that, that millennials and, 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 and Gen Z, the, 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 the younger kids beyond millennials, are not nearly as interested in driver's licenses mm -hmm. as, as, as we were. Um, and, in, uh, and, and we see that, the, 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 not, not only in, in the U.S., but in Canada, too, mm -hmm. fewer and fewer kids who reach 16 are, are getting their driver's licenses. And as one smart young girl said on a radio interview that I heard the other day, she said that driving gets in the way of texting, which I really like. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that rather than admonishing us to, to, to don't, don't text while, while we drive, her, her, her solution is quite simple, you don't drive. So, so I, I have a feeling that, that generationally um, there is a, a a band of transit riders who are coming up who will expect something different. And that, again, is a reason why Honolulu has to deliver on its promise of, of bringing transit into, in, in, into play. But, but Gary, uh, we're going to take a short break. That's Gary Andrushak. Okay. He's a planner with uh, IBI Group in Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, we're talking about uh, planning and transit and what Hawaii can do, what Honolulu can do to... Uh, to do to achieve the same outcome that uh, Vancouver has achieved, which is really re very remarkable. We'll take a one minute break. We'll be right back. You'll see. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks 
Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Mingo, we're back. We're back with Gary Andrzejczak yeah, like and my co-host. Yeah. We're live. We're live. We're live. And alive. And Sharon Moriwaki. We got it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I was, I was wanting to hear from Gary on how you plan for these communities when most people in automobiles justify it by saying, "I've got to take my mother-in-law here, my mother there, my kids here, the piano lesson up the hill." And, and public transit can't go to all those places I need to go. And how do you plan for that uh, in, in a community? Okay. All right. Um, again, part of, part of the work that I do with transit-oriented development is, is to, when, I, uh, when I talk to, to cities or when I talk to citizens within those cities, I, I, I tell them quite simply that, that what we're trying to do is set up scenarios where car, car ownership is an option, not a necessity. And, 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 and I say this specifically to, to, to Americans who have a very strong affinity to their car. What, what we're looking at here is a situation where you can use transit when it serves you best. In other words, if you're the, 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 the daily commute so that you've got to, you know, rather than, 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 than be stuck in a car for an hour and a half, if you can get on a train and it'll get you to that, that same downtown destination in, in 36 minutes, common sense tells me that's, that's the best option. That, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a car that you take to places that aren't on the, on the transit line. In other words, if you do have to get your mother-in-law to the doctor or whatever. One of the things that I tell uh, the communities I work with is that an ideal scenario would be if we can get families to the point where they can get by with one car as opposed to two cars because one of the, the, the partners, the mother or the father, the husband or the wife, can get to work um, by transit, then we've done that family a big favor. We, we, uh, governments and, and, and planners, and I think citizens too know that they should be spending about a third of their income on, on housing, and we work towards that, but nobody really knows the, that dirty little secret about what it costs to own a car. And the fact is that, that to, to buy a car, to buy insurance, to buy gas, to maintain it, to park it, costs the average family about $10,000 per vehicle. So if you have two cars, that's 20000 bucks. Now, if you make $100,000 a year, you can say that's fine. But if you make 40000 bucks a year and you're paying half of that on your car and you're paying a third more on your housing, you're up the creek. And so, so one of the things we want to do is is make transit convenient so that people can buy, get by without owning that second car. The other part to that, and this is one of the things that I was advocating at the uh, Salvage the Rail Forum, is, is that if, if we took the, 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 the Honolulu, the heart system, and made it at grade in and through the downtown with, with more stops rather than um, you know, the stops at, at, at larger spacings and then having to come off of a, 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 a big elevator escalated down to grade, then it, then it makes moving around the downtown a lot easier because, you, because public transit, light rail transit at that point just means you hop on a car, you go, you, 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 you go a block, you get off, you do something, you hop back on. Um, I was part of the initial... Um, the, 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 the commissioning of the, the, the Calgary Alberta transit line and, and when we put it in we, we said that of the six or so stops in the downtown there they were free in other words 
once you got beyond that zone, you paid for your ticket. But but transit through the downtown was was, was free to, for anybody to jump on or off, and mm -hmm. that that helped them move through the downtown quickly and purposefully. And and you know what? It did something else. Once they got on the train, people who would otherwise never get on the train but did because it was free said. You know, this is a nice service. I think I'll pay that two and a quarter to ride ride home tonight and see how that works. So it's another way to get people ride, riding the train. So, um, but but well, you know, one of the problems that we've heard, you know, so post uh, the salvage the rail program, we've had a number of discussions about this, and one of the most interesting discussions was the question of whether whether to go to grade, such as sure. you have in Vancouver. And uh, one fairly knowledgeable individual a couple of weeks ago, he said, you, you don't have enough capacity at grade. You can't possibly get enough people on there to make a difference. We intend, this is you know, looking at it from the point of view of the developer, we intend to have a ton of people come into central Honolulu, <laughs> downtown Honolulu on this, and it's, it's going to be the tuna build trolley. <laughs> uh, if you if you have it on you know on on grade, we need the capacity of overhead rail. Uh, what, what's your answer to that, Gary? Well, 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 my answer is that that whoever said that has a predetermined notion of what the solution is. My, uh, the, what, what we were advocating at, at the Salvage the Rail Forum, and, and, and certainly what what I'll be talking about when I'm next in in Honolulu, is that. Is that you do your heavy hauling from 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 the west, uh, and you get to a, a, a transit terminal, a transit plaza at at Middle Street. They come off the train, hopefully in large numbers. I, I I'm sure that 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 ridership will be supported. But but they once they come down, they get on to to grade, and and, and there again, there's there, there's choice. Firstly, um, and, and and the first way that you regulate. Uh, transit ridership. And let's say that that 8,000 people an hour are coming in off the train, um, and, and 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 you get to grade, and, and and you've got a system that with with cars at grade going into the downtown core that could only carry 4,000 people an hour. Well, the way that you do that is you simply up your headways. You put twice you put twice as many trains on. So if the train's coming off from the the the, the elevated trains are coming in at 15 minute increments, the headways that you have at grade are seven and a half minutes, so you double the capacity. But beyond that, then you, there, there, there are other things you can do. You can have intersecting uh, bus lines. You can have what cities like Portland, Oregon are doing, and it's probably at the forefront of, of public transit. They're bringing in ancillary streetcars now that, that, that work with this. So, so I don't buy that argument. I simply, I, 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 I I, I submit that the answer that was given to you was an answer that that only supports uh, this notion that you've got to. What, what are you going to do once you get all of these people to Ala Moana? I mean, where are they going to go then? They're going to spill out a mile away from where they want to be, and they're either going to get on a bus or, or a taxi or, or Uber or walk and be late to work anyway. So I think that. <laughs> The, what, you know, the, the, a really good transit system is one that has choice, and you get to, mm -hmm. you get choice by providing a variety of. So uh, let me ways let me it. move to one other thing that I think we should talk about. Uh, I I uh, was I was telling you before that I was in Vancouver last week, uh, just ten days ago, and I was so impressed because I do watch these things, especially when Sharon you know raises my public awareness <laughs> on such issues. Right. And um, I saw the, the promenade, and I saw the outdoor restaurants and the bikes and the, and the walking and the boats all together, all these modes of transportation all together. And it was like heaven on earth. It was a Bruegel painting of, of a human activity. And then you go a, a block away on the street, and you see tree-lined streets with mm -hmm. shops and walkable sidewalks, and people having a wonderful time walking in, in groups and, and a lot of people watching going on. And, and shopping, and then you see the uh, transit cars. I mean, it's, a, it's out of a sort of a painting of um, you know yeah, what, what okay. transit and what, what a city life should look like. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city. Then all this just a little way from Stanley Park, where you can do more of that, you know, in open space. So in terms of public space, I mean, I think uh, you have achieved a remarkable 
city a, a, a perfect okay. example of the way this should be. But, but here's my here's my lesson of it, and yeah, I'd like your reaction. Um, you know, you, you had to deal with, in, say, from the 1970s or whatever it was, you had to deal with property owners who owned the property along that industrial road in the harbor, the industrial harbor. You yeah. had to make them right. come around. You had to get them to, you know, let, let that property become public space. Not so easy. Um, you had to uh, get the people involved to get out of their cars and to use these facilities and these public spaces you built. You had to change the way people thought. And, um, and I know you found ways to do it. Obviously, it's been a great success and a great outcome. But in Hawaii, nay, you know, we have property owners who are looking for the biggest possible return, not taking no for an answer. Uh, we have property owners who don't give a rip about public space or the public you know, benefit and public welfare or transportation for that matter. Uh, we have, and we have a population that is endeared to its boots about driving cars. You know, there are lots of people in Hawaii who spend $10,000 or more on their car, but they only make $5,000. <laughs> I mean, that's how much they care about their cars. And, you know, we have got to change those, those, those thought processes. And, and my question to you, given all that, you know, has happened in Vancouver and the problems we have been experiencing, you know, for years now, and Sharon has been working on this for years now, <laughs> How, how do we do it here? What's your, okay. what's your suggestion, Gary? Okay, well, and that was, I will say, was a very long question. <laughs> well, I, 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 my, cheer up. You can give a short answer. But, 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 but go back to what I'm saying about a, 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 an at-grade light rail transit system in and through Honolulu, uh, the city of Honolulu, and, 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 and and, and, and one other thing that we haven't talked about here is the fact that the NAT grade system is much more readily expanded to, to, um, 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 to HI and on to Waikiki. But, 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 but what we do for the most part when, when we design transit systems within North American cities, we like to put them in, in, in the roadway because you're not, for starters, you're not fighting individual property owners because the city owns that right of way. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the other thing we like to do when, when, when we do that is we say that it's not simply an issue of, of putting in the track in the middle of the street or the, the opposite of, of it with, with, with regard to the elevated system that is envisioned to go to, to Ala Moana, which to my mind, and I said this when I was in Honolulu, it's, a, it's really freeway automobile or automobile freeway architecture that is being imposed on, onto the city. But what we do is, is we take that transit line down the middle of the street and at the same time, we rebuild the public spaces around it. In other words, uh, a, a, a road to me is curb to curb, a street to me is building space to building space. So we, so we envision that corridor to, 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 to make it really pleasant when you're riding on the train, when you jump off the train at a station, uh, we like to have knuckles where we have public plazas and restaurants and things like that. And, 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 and what happens over time, and, and admittedly it does take time because, because humans seem to be slow learners, but the property owners will, will, will say, well, there's something going on here. There's suddenly a lot of people in front of my building. Maybe I should redevelop it and put in a, 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 a restaurant or put in a, a new storefront that's got lots of glass and and, 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 and suddenly you get, you, you, you get developers who, who want to be part of the equation. When you talk about Vancouver and, and, and all of the positive attributes you saw, that didn't happen over time. But, but, but what happened um, early on, the, 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 the city, again, to its credit, um, charged developers of, 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 of a tax, if you like, uh, uh, based on square feet for urban rail public improvement. And in the early days, they bitched and moaned about it because, you know, it wasn't going to help them out any. It was just a tax grab, et cetera. But, but, but today, that, that, that tax is four times what it was before, and developers gladly pay it because that, that money they pay goes right back into their, 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 their frontage. In other words, it, it makes sure that 
the edges that, 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 that the, the streets you talked about when you walked in and through downtown Vancouver are, are beautifully designed and spaces you want to be in. When I was in Honolulu a couple of weeks or last month and I walked to the west end of Waikiki and, 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 and wanted to cross the road to get to the, the hotel side of it, I walked for two and a half blocks before I got to an intersection that actually mm -hmm. let me cross the street. And, and, and exactly, and exactly, Gary, that's exactly my point. Right. I mean, you, you and, and, not only do you have to design something smart, but you also have to get people to understand what you are doing and yeah. why you are doing it, and they should come yeah. along. But, you know, the bottom and, line and, and, is we're, we're, out of, we're out of time. Oh, no. We have, we no, have miles to go no, before we sleep. No, I want to hear more. I want to hear more. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary, we have to do this again with you. Uh, and and Sharon, Sharon, as the co-host co now, gets a chance to uh, try to summarize uh, all that you said and uh, all you might say. Oh, no. <laughs> This is so exciting to, to hear from you, Gary. I'm glad we finally got to connect. Um, I, I think that we, we emulate the great cities and we say Honolulu is a great city, but we can't do it without all the pieces coming together and, and having some vision Absolutely. that everyone can, can do um, the, the kinds of spaces that you talk about, not only the buildings. Yes. I like your statement earlier, not on this program, where you said, you know, great communities and not just the building, it's the spaces between right. and how you get yeah. people around. And I really would like to talk more t well, with you yeah. about that. And, and, and Sharon, I, I, I gladly do this another time. I, I've, got, I've got lots of notes and, and lots of experience. I guess that comes with age, but um, uh, I, I, this is an important conversation. And, and we're really talking about synergy here, which means the design of a city that is greater than the sum of its parts. And we simply have to, Honolulu has, has a great opportunity to capitalize on that transformation through transit. But Well, thank you, Gary. We've got we've to sign off now. Okay, go uh, thank okay. you for this conversation. There will be more to come. I'm sure we have many more questions, and we'd like to hear all of, all of what you've done and what you suggest for Hawaii. Thank you, okay. Sharon. Okay, thank you, Jay. Aloha. And thank you, Gary, we'll so much. We'll talk to you we'll soon. See you in September. Up. Aloha. Aloha.